taking a quick look at this new Alway. This one has been updated. It's not the same. <laughs> you know, it looks the same. Well, they did change. They did change a few things here, but yeah, they actually updated the specs on these things. And this is going to be interesting for you if you just bought one of the older models. <laughs> You're probably going to be like banging your head against the table. <laughs> so yeah, let's just kind of talk about this because. This company, they kind of offer a lot for the price. I mean, this is definitely a budget brand. But as I talked about, I kind of reviewed the NMC version of this power station, the older version. And there was a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of good stuff here. So, yes, we get LFP batteries now, but we also get all the other new tech and features. How about UPS? Yeah, all that stuff. So let's kind of go through it here real quick. So first off, the capacity. As I mentioned, they're still using the same case. This is, this is actually interesting considering the number of updates they've given this model. So now it's 1,008 watt hours, whereas the old NMC version was 1132. So yeah, that's you know slightly less. And then of course it does still weigh more, even with less capacity. It weighs about five pounds more so actually not too bad i mean this actually really does demonstrate the improvements we've seen with lfp life post cells recently you know it's i mean obviously the nmc is still better it's still lighter you're still getting more energy density but it's getting close and in fact i was kind of surprised because it's not just the weight you know it's the size I was kind of surprised they were able to get 1,008 watt hours in the same case. And then for the inverter here, this is interesting and actually we, we need to correct something on here. So it is 1,200 watts continuous and they do mention, yeah, you get a full 2,400 watt surge. So, you know, you can't run the biggest devices continuously, but uh, anything that's kind of got like a big surge, yeah, it should be able to handle it, no problem. And so this is what we need to talk about though. Power lifting, yeah, it kind of looks like whoever they hired to kind of design this graphic we're taking a look at here, they copied this little overview section here, you know, basically from Blue Eddy and all the other top brands, but they, they took it a little too far. Yeah, there's no power lifting. That's a Blue Eddy specific thing that, you know, that's their mode when the voltage drops. So yeah, the, you know, they didn't quite understand what was going on there. So yeah, there's no power lifting. And then this one here, 700 watt AC output. No, 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 that's, this is input, input. <laughs> so yeah, it's 1200 watts continuous, 2400 watt surge, and you can charge it up from the wall up to 700 watts. So, you know, as you can imagine at that rate, there's no power brick, you know? So yes, we do get the bi-directional inverter. And then of course we do get the UPS as well. And they're saying 10 milliseconds or less. So hopefully that's right. I mean, that's, that's a good spec. That's a solid spec. You don't got to worry about, you know, if you're using it with your computer, you don't got to worry about it not working at that speed. And of course, you know, what's interesting about this product is considering this is a budget unit, there's no app control here. But what they've done is kind of special, kind of, kind of interesting here. Check this out. There's this button right here with this little, yeah, the little charge icon there. Yeah, you can actually cycle through three different settings here for the AC inputs. So if you want the fastest speed, yeah, it's this icon right there. If you want the fastest speed, yeah, 700 watts. And then the medium speed, I don't know, it's like 400 watts. I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen. You know, obviously it's going to get slower and slower. The slower, the better. If, if you don't need to charge it up fast, you might as well just charge it up slowly. It's going to be better for the battery, right? So this is cool because yeah, no app. And in fact, this is, I just love this feature. Even, even if you make a power station with an app, it's just nice to have that because not everybody wants to use the app. And, you know, maybe you just don't want to, it's just, this is going to be easier, isn't it? I mean, it, it is. So, yeah, I kind of wish we could see more of this. You know, EcoFlow, they had the one switch. I, they used to have it. I think they started getting rid of it. But this is awesome. Just, you know, a button to be able to actually cycle through multiple options. And then guess what? There's, there's another setting here that you can actually do from the units. It's the USB button. 
you can actually hold it and then you can cycle through the different eco modes, the kind of auto shut off modes. So by default, it's one hour, right? So if you're just using only a couple of watts, like maybe you left the AC inverter on or you're charging something from USB that the battery is fully charged. So now it's not really charging anymore, you know, et cetera, et cetera it'll automatically turn the unit off. Of course, a lot of people, they don't like this feature because if you're using something like a 12 volt fridge that intermittently comes on, you know, that could be a problem. It could shut it off. Well, guess what? This unit, they actually allow you to cycle through a couple of different options, actually several options, all the way up to 12 hours. So yeah, just, I would actually just recommend putting it at the 12 hours because then you don't got to worry about it cutting out on you, right? But yeah, so very nice. You have the eco mode settings and you have the input charge settings right from the unit. No, no app necessary. And so let's get back to the specs here. How about the solar charging? Yeah, it's really good. A thousand watt hour battery here, 400 watts. So yeah, you might like that. And you might really like the fact that you can do up to 60 volts. And 10 amps. And just another thing here, <laughs> you know, this is awesome. This is awesome. They give you the full specs right there. You know, I can't tell you how many of these products, when we're looking at these on these listings, you can't find all the solar specs. I got to do like additional research, searching the web, searching their website. Sometimes I got to try to just hope someone who had a video of the thing got like a real zoomed in view. Yeah, so this is awesome. Good job from all way here. And then of course, the downside of this, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's the cable. This is the one thing that they did not update. I, I can't believe they updated so many things on this product. So they're still using this M20. It's like this aviation style plug, right? So I don't know, it's, I guess it's a good solid plug. I guess that's the one thing, you know, I would say yeah, it's not USB-C. So yeah, you know, but they do give you the MC4 adapter there too. Don't lose that cable. <laughs> Don't lose that cable. So yeah, kind of, that's the big disappointment. I, I really wish since they did kind of update this thing, I really wish they would have gone to XT60 or something or even Anderson. And just to kind of show you though that, yeah, let's kind of go back to this one. This is the old one, the NMC version. And yeah, you can see they updated the screen. So we will talk about that in a second here because I do have some comments on that. But yeah, the old input was only 24 volts and it was only 200 watts. So yeah, a big improvement on there. Also, just a little thing to note. Yeah, the AC inverter, they only had, it was only 110 volts before. Now it's 120 volts. And then, yeah, the screen. So let's kind of, let's talk about the screen because that's, it's an updated screen, but to me, mm, it just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like the numbers are smaller. The font is thinner. I think it's going to be harder to read. And then of course, it's just all monotone. There's so much information on it. And then everything's just white, which I think, I think that was a mistake. It's, it's nice that we got more information and we got input and output separate now, whereas before you could only have one at a time. But still, look how big those numbers are. And even the battery icon had some color to it, right? So I really wish we could have got like the orange ring to kind of tie in since they use orange in their branding. I think that would have been really nice. And I also kind of changed that little charge icon because that's an unusual feature. I think that's something that they should have highlighted. I made that orange as well, the charging input speed selector. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of that. I think, I don't, how much more would have it cost to add a little bit of color to the screen? I, I get that it's budget unit, but yeah, I think it, that would have just really helped. And then of course, let's talk about the USB. So yeah, there's no 100 watt USB-C here. It's just, there's just 260 watts, which actually, I don't know, you know, a lot of times when we do get a hundred watt USB-C, the other USB-Cs are only 20 watts, right? So let me know how you feel about that too. I mean, it's, I guess it could be good. It could be bad depending on what you want to do. And then everything else, like I said, it's 
pretty much the same case, which is actually a good thing. I was happy with this design because we get the handles tucked into the side of the unit with the flat top. It just, it makes it a clean, compact design, you know, but you can still pick it up. So, and then of course we do get the light on the side as well, which is, which is good. It's not on the front, it's not gonna blind you. As, as long as you don't have it shining right in your face. <laughs> and if you want something that can power big loads continuously, they did, they did have the NMC version, they did have a 2000 watt version. So I assume at some point there will be an LFP version that has a bigger inverter. So if you want to hold out for that, but still, like I said, this is kind of my favorite size, you know, because you can do, you can still do everything you need to do as far as cooking and heating, if you get the right appliance with a 1200 watt inverter. And then you just have something that's a little bit more efficient. It's going to be a little bit lighter and you still have a thousand watt hours to work with. And with 400 watts of solar going in or just being able to, charge it up in about an hour and a half from the wall if you need to at a friend's house, whatever. This has everything that you really need. No, it's not gonna power everything in your house. But yeah, and then the price too comes into play with that as well. Yeah, uh, hopefully you just kind of found this overview helpful and yeah, thanks for watching.